Hello and welcome to Martin O Horsemanship. Here we are with Laramie. <coughs> Laramie is a, is a six year old uh, bay run mare that belongs to my niece. Laramie's been here uh, going on two and a half months now or somewhere around that, that territory. But today we're just gonna be working on creating vertical, vertical flexion and possibly a, a couple steps of a backup. Now just to take it back on where I started with her or where I got her, well, just got her riding. She's just green, um, haven't been out of the barn with her yet, just mainly because of the time of the year it is. And, and you know, not that I can't ride on a cold or wet day, but I've got a process that I like to do with these things that I've did for years, and that's to, um, and that's to, to get them trustworthy in here. And then I graduate to the to my outside ring and get them trustworthy in there and controlled and disciplined. And then I venture out on them. But I haven't been able to take them to my outside ring due to the weather. So that's just my little process. I'm not saying that I couldn't ride her up and down the road here or out on the farm. I particularly don't like to ride on this road because we got some people around here that seem to think that this is a racetrack and it's quite dangerous. So um, so I don't particularly like to ride on the road. So, and she's fine where she's at. She's not hurting anything. I don't work her every single day. So it's not like I'm just burning her out. So that's kind of where we're at with Laramie. I've got her feet moving. I'm not going to work on that right now or show you that, but I've got her, I've got her trotting around and loafing around pretty decently. Um, not as decent as I'd like, and that's due to the small arena here. Uh, I'll get her better at that in the big arena when the weather allows me to. But we've got her moving around quite nicely. But what I'm after more than anything, I love to lope horses. I love to trot horses around. I love to do all kinds of things with horses. But what I'm after more than anything is control. And I'm after a good mouth, and I'm after <clears throat> the, 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 the goal or, the, or the, the, the luxury, I should say, of a horse being light in the bridle. So just right off, I'll just show you, we, we worked on some lateral here. We got her nice and soft, she bends without too much complaint, nice and soft. And after I get her to soften up to that and get soft with that, I'll slide my leg back and ask her to move over. Right now she's moving on her own because of balance. We're working on balance still. So right here, when she finds her balance and, and learns to balance herself with her head bent, now, now I'll slide my leg back and ask her to move her hindquarters over right there. Now I'll ask her to move her hindquarters over, getting control of the hindquarters on this horse. Right there, that's pretty nice. So that, that's her good way. So this way is not her good way. She protested a little bit because it is harder for her to do it. But right here, I'm just gonna catch that nose, drive her up into that, and wait on her to what? To get soft. Now I'm gonna slide my leg back Look at that hip and encourage her to what? Step that hip over. Now I may have to get a little bit more of, a, of an encourager right here and ask her with this little rope, just a little insinuation, move that hip. So we've got her pretty, pretty soft laterally, laterally. So today for five or 10 minutes, we're gonna work on a little bit of vertical. And the way I like to do that is to get them loosened up laterally first where they know what I'm asking for and they're kind of expecting it. So we got her, we got her loosened up in the bridle there a little bit. Now let me explain something to you about Laramie that you can look at in, that you can take to other horses and kind of give you an idea of what to look for. Laramie does not have a loose mouth. In other words, she never, she never works that bit in her mouth. She's always got it holding it still. Now a lot of you out there that may get confused with a horse frantically chewing on the bit, that's not what I'm talking about. I, but I would rather her have more of an active mouth. In other words, she wants to pick that bit up and move it around and, and, and work it with her tongue a little bit. 
but a horse like her generally is pretty resistant. They're pretty sticky. They're pretty, um, they're not going to give you a lot of, of give. You got to really, you got to make them do it. You got to take it from them instead of them giving it to you. So she's going to be the same way vertically. But the way I start this out is I simply ask for a down low and wide. I just ask for a simple, right there, vertical flexion out of her. Just as pretty and plain as you can get. I'm going to do it at a standstill several times here, and then I'm going to incorporate that into her just walking around and asking her to stop with two reins. I've done a bunch of one rein stops with her. I've got, the, I've got her going at a pretty good rate from gate to gate before quite a few times and reached down and got a good one rein stop on her. But today, like I said, we're going to work on incorporating two reins. And the reason I like to go down low and wide is because it don't give that snaffle bit that hinges like this. It don't give it that vice or that nutcracker, I should say, effect on their bottom jaw. If you go wide, it keeps that hinging point wide and it don't, it don't put that bottom jaw in a nutcracker type situation. So, so that's why I like to go low and wide. And right here, I'm gonna ask her to give to that again. Now I'm just gonna wave my legs I'm just going to start waving my legs and get a simple little one step backwards. I started just very briefly the other day when my niece was here, Morgan, and I worked on it just a little. I haven't worked on it since. So today's basically the sec second time that I've introduced this to her. You might say, well, Mark, it don't look like you're doing much. You know, why ain't you, you know, taking off on her and hauling down on her mouth and getting her to really put her feet in the ground and stop? Well, that's just it. I want to train her to have uh, that, that you won't see what I'm doing. A good handled, a good handling horse, you won't see the cues or the, the things that the rider is asking for if the rider knows what he's doing or she's doing and the horse does as well. So right here, I'm going to collect up on my reins, go wide and low. Now right there, I didn't ask her to back up yet. Right there, I wanted her to break at the pole. Now I'll ask her to back up. Now I'll ask her to back up. Let's see if we can get her to do it without raising her head. You know, let's wait right here, right there. She backed up, collected, broke at the pole. So now just to break the monotony, how simple, simply just move her around and ask her to walk out here. And I like to wake them up like that every now and then. They get kind of dull when you're working on these things. So I like to wake them up a little bit and get them out of that out of that little mode or that zone that they may be in. So I'm gonna stop her right here and let y'all see a broad, uh, a side view of this deal. So right here, I'm just gonna keep this simple, clean. There ain't no use in getting her fighting her head. A lot of people would think that this looks like it's boring, like I'm not doing a lot. That's the idea, not to be boring, but that I'm not doing a lot. I don't want it to be a, a, a white showing in my knuckles to try to get her to back up. I wanna do it with feel, Let's talk about this a minute. I've got that bit in her mouth to where it's not, it's comfortable. It's not low, it's not high, it's just right. People ask me all the time, how high should I raise, how tight should the bit be in her mouth? I just judge each horse by feel. I, I don't have any set pattern. When I put it on a horse, I just sit and kind of wiggle it back and forth on both sides and I kind of just get the feel of it. If it feels comfortable to me, it more than likely is comfortable to them. So, so the bit's nice and comfortable in her mouth. I've got light hands, but I can grind in there if I need to a little bit. I know how to do that. So I'm gonna go wide and low, and I'm just gonna ask her to simply break over a tip pole. Now I'm gonna start pulsating my legs a little bit and asking her to walk back up, collect it. Look at there, that was pretty. So we're gonna do that a couple more times at a standstill, and then I'm gonna incorporate uh, walking in on it for a few times, and probably let that be a pretty good little session for today. So let's ask her again at a standstill here, collect up on my reins. Wanna go wide and low. Look at there how she's dropping off that bridle already. Just wanna squeeze them legs a little bit, pulsate. Just pulsate your legs. Just put a little energy in there. Right there, that was a good step. Now why is she kinda, you know, taking a bigger step and then hesitating? It's confidence. It's not always that a horse is being stubborn. It's confidence. They don't back up. It's not a normal thing for them to do. So, so you know, they have to build their confidence on backing up. Some horses it don't bother, but some it does. Now let's incorporate just a little light walk right here in on it. 
and I'll try to line it up to where I'm broadsided so y'all can see it a little better. Now we're just going to get her walking around here, and I'm just going to simply ask her to walk, to stop, to rain, back up a couple of steps without that, wait on it to get prettier, wait on it to get prettier, right here it's coming. If you get a little complaint, that's okay. Just wait on it right there was a decent. So that's good. <clears throat> Remember, it's steps you're building up. You, you, you build a, a, a footer in the ground, just like building a house. The footer goes in the ground. It's solid. It's in the ground. It ain't going nowhere. And then you add blocks onto it, and it makes a strong, strong, strong foundation. Flat foundation. So right here, I'm just going to ask her to walk around again. I'm going to get her walking with a little bit of cadence here. Ask her to walk. Don't really want her trotting. I'm going to get her walking a little bit better. I'm going to turn her to where you can see her a little bit better, and I'm simply going to sit down and ask her to stop. But now look at there. Now look at there. Because she, because she understands, she uh, is doing it more acceptingly. And uh, so that's where I want to get with this, is that she understands. I think a lot of times the complaint and the and the ugliness that you see in horses is because they simply don't understand and you you keep asking them and you keep asking. So right here, we're just gonna ask her to step out again. Now this is the biggest thing that I see with people riding young or green horses is these two things right here called reins. They just don't know really what to do with it. So I'm a big uh, stickler about reins, about knowing how to use them, when to use them, and how much pressure to apply and when to apply. So it's called rain management. So right here, I'm gonna collect up. I'm gonna sit down, nice and quiet. Didn't like the head coming up, that's okay. We're just gonna hold right here, get a better look out of her. Hold her right here until she gets a better look and she gives. Right here, she's kinda of hanging up on this left side. So what I'll do is massage that tongue a little bit with this right wrist, this left wrist right here and get her off of that right there. See, you notice I didn't quit until she gave me a better appearance. You know, she wasn't complaining. So, so that's pretty cool. And I don't remember, don't forget that I always remember to come in here and, and ask her for a little bit of lateral. Now we're gonna ask that hip to step over and ask her to lo lo loosen his head up. Always keeping, always keeping, keeping your horse loosened up. It's just like the fire pliers that lays out the, 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 the weather. They're gonna get rusty. What's going to happen? They're going, they're going to get stiff. But if you put a little bit of WD-40 on them and you get to working them a little bit, you'll get them freed up. So I always want to keep these horses nice and loose and free. I'm going to get her walking around this way now, just to break the monotony. We went to the right, and it don't really matter. But like I say, it's just to break the monotony of it. So right here, we're going to ask her for a simple little stop right here, wide and low. Wait on her to give in that bridle. Back off of that. Now, now here's where I'm at right there. That's pretty good right there. Now here's where I'm at on all this. A lot of folks, this is just not action packed enough. It's not macho enough. It's not gritty enough. You know, and I think the majority of the people, the reason why they train the way they do is for the show of it. It looks better. I'm all about quiet. Look, I've got this horse riding. She's been here two and a half months. I would just about put anybody on her that knows how to handle a green horse with a set of reins. That's big right there. And uh, so, um, quit blowing bubbles, babe. <laughs> Y'all hear her chewing gum and blowing bubbles over there. But, but you know, I'm all about keeping these things soft <clears throat> and light. And, and if it's not action packed, then it's okay. Now the next thing I'll, I'll start doing after, after I get this a little bit better is I'm gonna slip on a little spur with her. And then what am I gonna do? I'm gonna incorporate the hindquarters just like you saw me doing. I'm gonna get her back to I'm gonna do a session with her of getting her soft vertically and laterally. And then what am I gonna do with my spurs? I'm gonna start laying that rein on her just like this and tipping that nose a little bit, turning my toe out, putting my heel in her and starting to ask her to what? Rotate or pivot on her hindquarters and move this shoulder over just like this. You see, this is her hindquarters, my elbow is. I wanna teach her how to stay put and pivot. We've already got her doing this. This is her front end. We've already got her doing that. Now we've got her collecting up and backing up. So now we're gonna teach her to stay on her hindquarters. But why have I waited till after vertical to teach her to stay on her hindquarters? Because just that, 
by doing this vertical deal, I'm teaching her how to what? Rock back her weight on her hindquarters to do what? To take the weight off of the front end, transfer it to the rear end so she can move that shoulder better. See, it's a process. It's really not hard to understand. It's actually pretty simple. So right here, we'll, we'll get her juiced up here a little bit, get a little bit of energy in this walk. Just want to move it around. And this is boring to a lot, but I love it. Just nice, slow, methodical work. So right here, we're just going to sit down, ask her to stop, two-handed, get off of that left side. She's kind of wanting to hang on right there. She's kind of wanting to hang on this left side. We're going to ask her to get a little bit better here before I quit. Right there, that's pretty nice. <clears throat> so just to answer all questions, she has had her teeth uh, floated. She don't have any wolf teeth. So all that's been taken care of. I've got a very good vet that does my uh, Dr. Halt in Abington, Virginia. He does my um, all my veterinarian work and he's, uh, he's probably forgot more than most vets know. I'm gonna kind of build him up here a little bit <clears throat> because it's, it's to be true. So he's done a good job on her teeth. Now look at that little backup. Now you might say, well it don't even look like you're adding much pressure. Well that's the whole key. Look, I just got a light. Look at my fingers. I'm not even collapsed my hands on the ropes. I'm just holding between my ring finger and my pinky right there and I'm just holding a little bit of pressure and I'm just aggravating her a little bit until she what? Gives me what I want the correct way. And that's all I'm doing. And then I'm simply, simply releasing her. It's not a big deal. It don't have to be dust flying and action packed. It can just be my slow, methodical work. Now you might say, well, Mark, does it work when you're busting across the pasture and you're chasing a cow? It eventually will. Right now, she's not ready for that anyway. See, I think that's where people go wrong. They get these horses trustworthy. And then they, they say, okay, we're gonna put a bigger bit with a curb chain in her mouth and they're gonna go busting across the pasture riding one-handed and that horse is not ready for that yet, swinging a rope, and I'm all for all that, so don't get mad at me like I'm making fun of cowboys. Hey, I love the cowboy life. I'm not making fun of anything. I'm trying to get you to understand that these horses sometimes aren't ready. Is They, they aren't ready for all that. So no, to answer your question, uh, because I've started her off slowly, now does that mean I can go busting across the pasture? Is she gonna remember that light approach? Again, no, not right now she's not. She's not ready. She's not ready for it. She's not educated enough. So I'm just all about training a horse slow and really teaching them the process of, it's, it's a process of, of elimination. You know, they have to learn how to eliminate uh, the things that I'm asking them for to know what I want. Process of elimination. They just, they just kind of, they say, well, this don't work. Pressure don't go away here. Pressure don't go away here. Oh, it seems like the pressure goes away there. Process of elimination. They learn to process it in their mind where that pressure goes away at. So I hope that helped you today. We're going to continue to keep working Laramie and, and documenting her progress. And um, she's a nice looking mare. She's a big mare. She's a sturdy mare. She'd make a good, a good cow pony to go out and do a day's work on. You know, a lot of people don't like using mares, but I don't, I don't personally, I like a mare myself. I know a gelding, it's, it's less trouble sometimes, uh, but, but I like a mare, but, um, but we'll just uh, continue to work her and uh, get that nice soft feel on her to where maybe one day I can bust across the pasture, sit down one-handed, ask her to stop, boom, she gives it to me. So that's the goal, not there yet, but that's what we're working on. So thank you for watching, God bless you. And have a good day.